Hello, my name is Jennifer Delano, and I am here to record my oral presentation for PHI 250 Ethics with Christos Giannopoulos. Just to prove that I am who I say I am as a student, here is the paper that we were supposed to fill out, and here is my name printed at the bottom. So when you receive this section in your email, when I scan it in and pass my project in, you can verify the handwriting if you want to. And I'll show it again so you can focus in on it. So as you can see in my paper, the name of my report is going to be Gran Torino, as that is the movie that I have chosen to base my oral report around. My second think paper, that is. So, <clears throat> Gran Torino is a movie that was produced and released in 2008, and I chose to do this movie because I'm a big Clint Eastwood fan, and I've also seen the movie quite a few times over the years before this course, and really enjoyed it, and thought it would be a really cool movie to analyze with an ethical lens, so to say. So, Gran Torino is, this, basically, I feel, the story of one man's own personal redemption. Um, the story is based around a man named Walt Kowalski, who is a Vietnam vet, who's retired, obviously, and was very recently widowed at the beginning of the movie by his name, uh, his wife, whose name is Mary, I believe. And he holds on to a lot of rigid beliefs. He is estranged from his sons. He's very bitter, uh, has a racist tendency, which is sometimes justifiable, depending on who you're talking to, judging by what he went through in Vietnam. And he kind of just holds on to these beliefs and goes about his everyday life and doesn't see much wrong with his lifestyle until he comes into inevitable contact with the Hmong family next door. Now, the Hmong family next door is a family of people who are from a culture that are very similar, similarly looking to the people that Walt was forced to kill in Vietnam. And basically, Walt's racist beliefs are challenged when the Hmong gang, which is run, con coincidentally run by Tao, uh, Tao's cousins, Tao is the son of the Hmong family next door, they try to coerce Ta uh, Tao into being, what's the word for it, being broken into the gang by, you know, an act of initiation, and that act is to steal Walt's prized Gran Torino. Walt catches him, and basically the Hmong family insists that Tao work off his debt to Mr. Kowalski for stealing his Gran Torino. And Walt could want nothing less to do with him, but the Hmong family won't leave him alone, so he lets it happen. He ends up taking Tao under his wing, so to say, and teaching him how to be a man, how to talk like a man, how to do actual physical labor, um, how to talk to girls even. And eventually he even helps him get a carpentry job where he's actually making real money. And he also helps Walt a great deal around his house, which is also something that's hard for Walt to accept because he's so used to doing things on his own and in his own way. So Walt is inevitably kind of forced into a relationship with Tao, and I believe that he fulfills some of his needs as a previous soldier and a father figure with Tao. Walt is very estranged from his own sons, I think because his sons are very preoccupied with their families and their snobby grandchildren and their materialistic wives and, you know, modern society, something that Walt doesn't necessarily agree with. So I, I, I feel that Walt fulfills many of his needs that have gone unfulfilled for years through his relationship with Tao. He is sort of a father figure to Tao, kind of shows him the ropes, how to be a man, how to do a man's work um, in the American way. Walt was also a, I have my cat in my lap, so if you're wondering what just jumped down. Walt was also a retired uh, Ford's, uh, Ford 
uh, company worker, you know, make putting together cars. So he's kind of assimilated with the American way of things, so to say. So I think he fulfilled his kind of need to be a father figure through Tao. And Walt also grows very close with Sue, which is Tao's sister. Sue is kind of like a daughter figure to him. He, Walt looks out for her on many different occasions throughout the movie, you know, warning her of the various dangers of the gang um, around their community and how vulnerable she is just because she's a woman. And Walt ends up going to a barbecue at the Hamong family's house and ends up trying their food and really kind of fitting in with the family and accepting them after years and years of, you know, holding those racist beliefs really close to his heart. They're really, really, really challenged through his relationship with Tao and Sue. And this is where the part of the redemption comes in. It is very clear to me that throughout the movie, Walt carries around a lot of guilt and possibly regrets, um, I think in accordance to his relationship with his own children, in relation to what he experienced and what he did in Vietnam, and carrying that guilt around for many years. I, th I feel that he finds his own personal path of redemption through his relationship with Tao and Sue. And that all starts when Sue ends up getting kidnapped, brutalized, and raped by the gang that Tao was being coerced into joining in the beginning of the movie when he tried to steal Walt's Gran Torino. Sue returns looking very, very poor. Um, you can tell that she had been treated very badly in the sick part. I think that really disturbed Walt the most was that it is it was members of her own family that raped her and beat her the way that they did. Walt, in a fit of rage, immediately starts planning in his head a plan of revenge. He includes Tao. Well, Tao was very fired up as well. Um, due to Walt's kind of protective nature over Tao, Walt chooses to face the gang on his own, thinking that he is an old man that has lived a very fulfilled life, and that Tao is a young man with lots of potential and a whole life in front of him. So in order to keep Tao safe and protect him and kind of be fulfill his needs to be a soldier and a protector, naturally, Walt chooses to face the gang alone. Walt basically gets killed by the gang. Um, he fulfills his wife's wish of going to the confession booth and confessing his sins before he goes. And he goes to face the gang with no weapon, goes to reach in his pocket to a little lighter and is inevitably shot down by many members of the gang from the building that he is facing. I believe that basically the, the message of this movie is that you should never write someone off that you should never disregard someone because of how they look or where they come from or their religion because inevitably you know you never know if they're gonna end up fulfilling the needs in your life like they did for Walt you just never know and for Walt it was definitely a story of his own redemption he managed to redeem himself for you know not being a father to his sons not having the ability to be close with them and also redeeming himself from all of the sins so to say and things that he did while he was in Vietnam that haunted him he was able to kind of right the wrongs with his relationship with Tao and Sue now I, I didn't mention this in my paper because it didn't really occur to me a couple days until after I had passed my paper in but I, I I'm not sure how this would fit into ethics, but I do think that Gran Torino has a lot of references to Christianity throughout the movie as well. Uh, specifically saying the fact that Walt's wife wanted him to go to the confession booth, you know, many times before she died and just wanted it to happen before he died so that he could die in peace, um, reminds me of the last scene of the movie. Basically, I view the whole scene and the whole idea of Walt facing the gang, knowing that he could potentially get hurt and maybe even die, as sort of a form of self 
self-sacrifice, self-righteous sacrifice. In the scene that he, where he faces the gang is also, you know, very, very similar. He, he faces the gang in such a way that it looks like he is standing in a garden in front of their house. And just the pose at the end after they shot him and he, he's laying on the floor, not, not the floor, the ground with his arms just spread like this, almost looks like Jesus after he had been nailed to the cross. And the fact that he muttered Hail Mary under his breath as he reached into his pocket to pull out the lighter really just spoke to me that, you know, Walt was willing to sacrifice his own life to protect Tao, just as Jesus died for the rest of us, you know, so that we can be forgiven for our sins. That really just, you know, reinforced the idea to me that this story is the ultimate story of redemption for an old man named Walt Kowalski. And that shall conclude my oral report.